Okay. Well, this is not the video I was planning on doing today. There's going to be a little 150 update. But then this happened. Because um, I'm a dumbass. What I needed this for, I don't know. But it was five minutes from home. And the price was decent. And here we sit. So, what I initially thought when I saw... Okay, so back up a little bit. So there I am. What day was it? Friday. Got home from work. It was like two hours into sleeping. One of my friends calls me, wakes me up. Says, hey, there's an Oliver Planner for, for sale over in the next town over. Check out your Snapchat. I just sent you a picture of it. And the picture they sent me was a frontal view looking right straight down the tongue. And the first thing I saw was these two great big hoppers on the front. And the decals say Oliver Iron Age. Um, so my first thought was because Iron Age was they that was the name that Oliver sold their sprayers under, their potato planters. Um well, here. There's a whole list of shit. We'll get to these in a second. Uh, weed sprayers, mist sprayers, orchard and row crop sprayers, potato planters, corn planters that I did not know. Transplanter, vegetable planters, peanut pickers. I did not know Oliver made peanut pickers. That's new. And orchard and row crop dusters. That was all stuff sold under the Iron Age uh, brand. Division of Oliver. Oliver Iron Age. But we'll get to that. We'll get to the Iron Age connection here in a minute. So... My first thought when I saw this was potato planter because it looks like that this is what an Iron Age potato planter looks like, at least from the front. Great big seed, or great big hoppers on the front for the potatoes and the big 24 inch drive wheels. That's, that's what I thought it was, was a potato planter. So uh, after I hauled in that load of beans yesterday, I was going to deliver a straw but it was raining so i couldn't so i shot over there and looked at it and got to looking and it's like well this is interesting you got these great big hoppers on front these hoppers that i assumed were fertilizer hoppers and then i popped the lids off of these hoppers there's corn plates in them it's like well that's interesting so then I got to thinking, well, maybe it's a potato planter, but in order to make it more versatile, maybe they offered a corn hopper kit for it so that you could double your use out of it, make it, you know, more bang for your buck, plant your corn with it and, pot and potatoes with it. Either way, um, the guy had it advertised for, the guy had it sitting next to the road, he had $600 on it, and I'm like, well, huh, I don't really see $600 here. Um, so he wasn't around, but there was a phone number on the sign. So I called the phone number. I was like, okay, how stuck are you on the $600? He's like, well, yesterday I had a guy stop by and I told him $400 to take it. He put a hundred dollars or he put a hundred dollars down on it, but he hasn't got back with me yet. I'll see, get a hold of him. And if it's not gone tomorrow, it's yours. If you'll give me 400 bucks for it. All right. And then he said, oh, and I've got the books for it. Well, that sweetened the deal a little bit, and that made me... I mean, I still didn't need it. Probably shouldn't have bought it, but here we sit. But the fact that he had the original books with it, it's like, okay, I can... Maybe... I, I bought it, obviously. So, um, got it home, or went today, uh, called him this morning... Apparently, the guy never got back to him because he said, if you got the money, come get it. So I went and got it this afternoon. Got it home. And I didn't look at the books until after I got it unloaded. And then I saw this is, this is, this is what it came up with. Oliver Iron Age number 264 band corn planter, two row. Basically, the four band after I got started looking through the book, is they have four different 
in one pass you place fertilizer in four different spots um so these big hoppers that i initially thought were seed hoppers for potatoes are actually big ass fertilizer hoppers which are in surprisingly good shape they've obviously been used because somebody has marked on the side of the hopper I'm assuming those marks are the number of pounds that it holds up to that level, is what I'm guessing. But regardless, these are fertilizer hoppers, and you have, it basically fills this up, and then it's got two little distributors right here that drop your fertilizer um, into two separate bands that would end up on either side of the row. My guess is a little bit above the row. And then, I gotta find it. Looks like I'm missing these guys. Because there's the fertilizer cups, but these are missing. There are a couple parts missing off of it, which I would have to come up with at some point. Because this is going to obviously have to be a restoration project there's enough of it i mean it's worth saving there's enough there's definitely it's like 98 percent complete and not actually in that bad of shape um dang it i might have went past it i might have went past it this is all operating instructions I think I went past it. And then this is where things get a little interesting. It's calling those big hoppers seed hoppers and it calls them a Springfield hopper. I don't know what that means. Oh, wait, nope. Wait a minute here. It coal hopper. Um, figure 12. Okay, so apparently you could order this thing with a coal planter hopper on it, which would be that guy. Springfield hopper, figure 11. So then... 13B, we're looking for step 12B and 12A. Because I want to know, figure nine, attaching Springfield fertilizer hopper. There it is. Um, so yeah, this is a set. This is your second fertilizer hopper, and this is for your in-row fertilizer. So you got your three fertilizer bands. You got your two along either side of the row. You got your in-row fertilizer, which is this. And then your seed is going to be your fourth band. So one, two, three, four band. Um, and then apparently you had the option to order this for the coal seed hopper, a Springfield seed hopper, which I've heard of coal planters before. I've never heard of Springfield planters, so that's different. But, and then obviously this one's got Oliver hoppers on it. So, yeah, it's definitely different. I've never, once I got back here and got it in here and started looking at it and figured out what it was, the first thing I did was went in and got on the internet to see if I could find anything related to this planter whatsoever. And the only thing I found on this planter, I could not find anything in an internet search. The only thing I found on this planter at all was a single Oliver brochure on eBay that was for this planter. That was it. Can't find anything on Google. Nothing. The only other thing I found somewhat related to this is apparently the previous model was an Oliver Iron Age 942. 
And the biggest difference I saw was the shape of the hoppers, where this one is all round. The 942, they're all, they're all like perfectly square. Well, not, I mean, they're, they're shaped like they're hot. They're shaped like a hopper, but they're not, they're like, they're boxes. They're not round hoppers. These, the front hoppers are squared off. They're not round like this. But that one has the older style decals on it, which would put them in the fleet line era. And they had red in the, in the uh, obviously it's a black and white color or black and white photo on the front of the manual. But you can tell the color contrast between the frame and everything and the wheels and the wheels were red. This one, you got to look. And I actually found why the wheels are so crusty. I don't know. But when I was backing it in here, I saw... I can't remember which wheel it was on, but one of these wheels still had green paint on it. And the brochure I found for it is, has it behind like a Super 77 or a Super 88. I couldn't tell which because all it shows is from the rear wheel back. But the brochure shows it behind a Super Series. This style of Oliver Shield is Super Series. Obviously, green wheels. So this is going to be somewhere between a 55 possibly 54 to like 50 with green wheels it'd be like 50 late late 54 to early 56 ish um so that dates it a little bit but other than that that's really all i know about it i i have never seen one of these before never heard of one I can't, like I say, I can't find any information about it on the internet. All I have is the books I got with it and the one brochure that I found, which I bought. It'll be here in a few days. But, yeah, that's basically all I can tell you about it. Um, but as far as what it's missing, um, it is missing these opener discs, which... That's a setting up. Let's go to the parts list. Let's see if it's missing what holds those discs on. Springfield fertilizer hopper. Oh, okay. So that's the spring that's the Springfield seed hopper. Apparently the coal one is the flat square one. Springfield fertilizer hopper. So this is apparently all Springfield parts. Never heard of Springfield before, but that's apparently what it is. That's the coal double seed hopper, whatever that is. Um, these are, okay, these are the openers. So we're missing, yep, we're missing several pieces here. Fertilizer covering discs. Fertilizer. Oh, okay. So these, the covering discs are what's around. Okay, I got gotcha. you. We're, we're making some headway here. So basically, I am missing the discs, the hubs, and these, um... guess i don't know let's see part number 16 16 16 bearing so that must be some sort of chilled bearing so i'm missing the bearing the hub the disc and the the hub cap and those must bolt right there and then i am missing one of the covering disc shanks that would bolt right there now since it's an iron age it's got me wondering if it shares some of these parts in common with a potato planter which would probably make these make this stuff slightly easier to find but not super easy because even the potato planters aren't that common especially not around here when you do find them it seems like mostly all of our potato equipment the diggers and the planters and everything it seems like when you find them they're in like new york Massachusetts, Delaware, Pennsylvania, like out on the East Coast in the potato country. What was the potato country at one time? I think I think they still grow quite a few potatoes and vegetables out that way, but so yeah. Um, but then 
the part that is interesting that I'm not exactly sure why it was in the envelope with the books, but this is for a potato, a potato equipment company. Lockwood Graders, Gearing, Nebraska. I don't know if anybody that watches my stuff has ever heard of that, but apparently they got they had warehouses in Gearing, Nebraska, Antigo, Wisconsin, Rupert, Idaho, Grand Forks, North, North Dakota, Monte Vista, Colorado, Presque Isle, Island, Maine, Gilcrest, Colorado, Six Lakes, Michigan, Two Lake, California, Bakersfield, California, Quincy, Washington, and Hefford, Texas. But this was to a guy named Eugene Wansneal in Edwardsburg, Michigan. But it was talking about uh, the, the established service agencies throughout the country who will handle the sales of our products. It sounds like this guy was just inquiring about some equipment by the sound of the letter. But then there's somebody used a calendar page, Tuesday, April 1961. Um, and it's hard to read some of this chick chicken scratch. It looks like plate number 17, Iron Age Hopper Drive. Something I can't read that. Belt Drive, uh, item number 31, roller. Item number 30, groove pin. Wiggins something Dayton belts for elevator Lockwood Grader Inc. So I don't know if the same guy that had this thing had an Iron Age potato planter or what, but this I don't think goes with that, but it was in with the manuals. So that was interesting. And then this was in with it too. This is kind of neat. Ainsworth dial a hybrid. Apparently you, they have this region thing on here. So you, um, and then they got your north there. Then they got these boxes that correspond with the regions. So north, north, central, central, south, central, south. And then blah, 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 blah. blah. Then you point the arrow at the, uh, trait you're looking for so top yields good grain quality standability full season blah 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 and then the boxes line up and it tells you what hybrid you're looking for for your area it's Ainsworth Seed Company Mason City Illinois telephone 249B dated 1960 Perigraph Corp Maywood Illinois and then what was this Ainsworth Seed Selector Acres per bushel, acres plants. Uh, this is a little interesting. Set acres to be planted at acres one bushel will plant. Read bushels required at arrow. Oh, okay, so. These must be. So apparently these numbers on top, I'm guessing are your plant population. Yeah, cause they say hill drop and drill. So you'd have plants at 17 and yeah, that makes sense. So apparently these numbers are your population you're shooting for. So let's say you're shooting, wow, these are low populations for today. So let's say you're shooting for 20,000 plants per acre on a hill drop system with one or two seeds per hill. You're at 15.6 inches between hills or for drill, which is what a, what a normal planter would be with just a regular plate. You're at uh, 7.8 inches between seeds. And acres one bushel will plant. So on a large flat seed, 
one bushel will plant 3.2 acres on a medium flat for this is kind of neat really and then producers of x brand hybrid corn purity proof seed grains high plus feed seeds and what do we got around the other side here we got wheat hairy vetch timothy basically all your grains and small grains and forage crops so let's say you're wanting to plant korean lespedeza that's the one that's on that's one we'll do so at 60 pounds per bushel your seeding rate of 10 to 15 pounds per acre seeding date in February that must be your intended harvest date maybe if you plant in February it's gonna get gonna be a spring interesting but this is kind of neat it'd be nice to deck to know exactly how to use it but Oh, and then there's another little dealio right here. So you got acres per bushel. You must use this after. So. Acres to be planted. acres I really don't know how the hell that one worked acres to be planted bushels are huh, interesting but that's neat sorry I was I got into the zone using that and I kind of forgot I was videoing um so yeah but uh onto the Iron Age connection a little bit. So, the whole Iron Age thing, this is obviously the, the tag on the back. Doesn't even say Oliver on it. Iron Age was originally a brand brought out in 1930 by the A.B. Fakwar Company out of York, Pennsylvania. Um, Farquhar, A.B. A, Farquhar, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but I cannot for life me figure, I've never been able to, I've never actually heard anybody say that name out loud, so, um, anyway, was founded under the Farquhar name in 1889, and throughout the late 1800s and into the early 1900s, they were actually a full-line farm equipment company. They had tillage equipment they had manure spreaders they had steam traction engines um planting equipment potato equipment they made sawmills um cultivators you name it. it it was a full line farm equipment company um in right at the right around the turn of the century even up to the point they had a, they made a small venture into gasoline traction um gasoline traction engines and I, they had like one or two what you would consider small frame gasoline tractors that would compete with like a rumley oil pole or something like that but you know little or lighter frame more toward the midwest row crop guys light frame gasoline tractors um but in the 1930s they kind of got away from the tractor side and obviously steam was dead basically by that point at least in the agricultural world um, and they brought in uh, 1930 they brought out the Iron Age line which was um, potato equipment orchard equipment um, sprayers stuff like that uh, and then up until 1952 all this was built under the AB Fakar company name and then in 1952 Oliver bought the company out 
and started selling all the, everything under the Oliver Iron Age brand name. Although obviously by this tag, the Farquhar name still stuck around probably because they wanted the uh, name to go with the product. Um, but they kept the manufacturing in York, Pennsylvania. It was there until the, until they until White Motor Corporation naturally dissolved this division and got rid of it um, after the takeover in 1960. So basically, from 1952 to 1960, um, the Iron Age line was sold under Oliver Iron Age until White screwed that up. So that's where the Iron Age comes from. Um, it's actually a lot older than the, well, it's not a lot older. It's from a different company that became a division of Oliver. So that's where the Iron Age comes into things. So there's that. Um, I guess I don't really know what else to say about it. That's basically as far as I've been able to get. Like I say, I will probably eventually try to hunt down the few missing parts that I need for it. Oh, the other thing that's missing or broke off, but by the pictures be fairly easy to fabricate is there's supposed to be a handle that sticks up like yay far and you trip that rod left or right to trip your markers or um, it comes back here and these rods just obviously trip these latches and you got your right and left marker then they reset when you raise just like a modern planner. So, yeah. But, and obviously you're going to have to get it over to the barn here at some point. But before I do that, I kind of want to get it power washed. And get the shit cleaned out of these boxes. Um, and probably oil the inside of these boxes and everything to keep them from deteriorating any more than they already have. Huh. I wonder which one that went on. Actually, you know what? I wonder. I bet these guys originally went here off of this one because that's got to go all the way down to your opening shoe and i bet that the two of these that are on here were originally up on those front ones because that's what they're supposed to look like so i'm still missing two but i'll bet that's what that is i'll bet i'll bet i'll bet Oh, and this one's missing the, uh, that hopper's missing that drive and agitator. That all comes up through the center. So, have to find a couple small things for it. It's probably, I mean, I, like I say, I've never heard of or seen one of these planters before in my life. So... It's not going to be easy finding the stuff to put it back right, but I think she looked cool as hell all painted up. I don't know if it would ever necessarily plant a seed again, but uh, if anybody knows me, you know I'm probably going to at least try to come up with the stuff to make it work again. But just another thing to add to the list of all of the someday projects that I have that really I, I shouldn't, I, I, I should quit accumulating projects. So anyway, that is an Oliver Iron Age Model 260 corn planter, possibly one of the very last left in the world, because I've never seen one. Can't even, like I say, can't even find any information on it, can't find any mention of anybody having one. So if they're out there, they're hiding. But anyway, uh, 
I guess we'll have to do the T105 video tomorrow because this is your this is your Saturday video. So I guess that's it for this one and we'll catch you guys on the next one.